Hi, welcome to 2020 Tasty Treats with Gourmet Quarter. I'm Susan Clare, Gourmet Quarter, and we're having a whole lot of fun this time. We're doing uh, 20 different appliques of things you might see in a sewing room. So we're having a whole sort of assortment of bits and pieces. We've got snips and sewing machines and pins and irons and all the sorts of things we use in our sewing room. So we're up to block number five this time. There's 20 in the series. So we've already, as you can see up here, we've already done four of them. So this time we're up to number five. So we're just working along on here, across here. So we've done the thimble. We're going to do this little tape measure this time. So there is a pattern available on gourmetquarter.com. It's a downloadable pattern that comes each day. We're doing a block each day for 20 days. The pattern will look something like this, of course, depending on what it is that the applique is. Everything's ready to trace onto the fusible web. Uh, so other than that, I'll get going showing you what we're doing. So it's this little tape measure. So we're going to put a little bit of uh, some markings on. So it's really just a single shape. But I'm going to do the indication of the this, this coil of the tape measure and the little lines on it with stitching. So what I find I'm best to do is I mark on the back of my paper for the fusible web all the lines and things so that I can then place that on a light box and I can see through. Now I've already marked the coil but I haven't marked the indicating lines of, of possible measurements. They're not exact. So I can see through enough to be able to mark and I've just got a pencil so you don't want a heavy mark because you're just going to be stitching these. You could mark them if you wanted to with a permanent pen but I think they'll be pretty straightforward to stitch. I'm doing free motion stitching. So I've marked all those on so I've got my coil marked and the little indicators of measurement that makes it look a bit like a tape measure. I'm not going to put numbers on. You could put numbers on if you wanted to. So I'm going to now position this onto uh, the background. So it's got just a little end. Most tape measures have something like a little metal end on them. So I've got a couple of little bits to go on there. Other than that, it's a fairly a simple applique in the way of just being a shape with some stitching. So. When you position things onto your background, just have a look at how high they are on the block, whether they're fairly well centered side to side. Sometimes when the majority of a design is, is, is larger but slightly off center, it's probably still better to have it just slightly off center so that, because otherwise it can look a little bit out of balance if you're not careful with a few things. So I think that's looking pretty good. So it's probably slightly closer this side than this side. Not a lot, just a little bit. But that's because the bulk of it is there. If we pushed it right over, it would start to look a, a little bit lopsided, which we don't want it to do. So I'm going to position this little end over the end of my tape measure here. That's like a little metal end. And then just on the inside edge, so that's actually inside the coil, there would be another end on the other end of the tape measure. So I'm just going to put on, it's just half of the, the measurement, uh, the piece really, because it kind of is lurking behind the coil, so you've got to position it so, it so it will look like the coil is coming in front of it. So we can do all these things. So I'm going to position, sorry, I'm going to iron that in place now. And because I'm free motioning, I'm using a stabilizer to hold it nice and firm while I stitch. So I'm just using the cotton batting for that. And then I'm ready to go to the machine. So on the machine, I've got a grey thread. I've got my feet teeth are dropped, I've got a little open toe free motion foot on and I'm ready to stitch. So I think I'm going to start at the in the centre with this little end bit on there and, and then I'm going to come around and we'll work the rest of it out as we get to it. So I'm going to do that little end bit first. And I'm going to snip my thread end out of the way. And I'm just going to come now straight onto that line that I've drawn for stitching. Now it may be necessary to come back and re-sew this line if it doesn't seem strong enough, but I think it's going to be enough. Because I've got a fairly dark thread and it's a quite a light coloured fabric. So I'm just following that line that I've drawn on there. If your line isn't too heavy it won't matter if you wander off too much, so keep it light. And if you use a pencil, quite often you can erase 
with just a little eraser and he marks a pencil. straight down again so that I can keep going. We're going to get this done all in one go I think. And now when I've got these little markings here, so I just go past the mark and then I come up and back down. The reason I go just past the mark is it gives us a line to go up and back to, which just helps it sit just a little bit better. Now this line here just indicates the end of this Rolled up tape measure. We'll come along here, and the same thing all the way along. We'll just do these little markings as we go. It's kind of like drawing with your sewing machine to do these sorts of things. Lots of fun to be had doing that. We're nearly at the end already. And we just come up here, a couple of stitches on top to finish it off, locks it, and we have a very smart looking tape measure, I think. And we can pop that up here with our other sewing room items. We've got a, getting a good little collection of necessary items in our sewing room. Tape measures and thimbles and slips and sewing machines. What more could we want? So that was applique number five in the series. I will see you again with applique number six for the sewing room.